Alright, so this is going to be a two-part video. Um, the first part I'm going to show you the new feature I've implemented. Uh, hopefully that will be released in the next patch. And um, the second part I will show you how to achieve... Well, how to add your own features to this feature. <laughs> okay, so uh, the feature is... It's, um, it's a dialogue in an escape menu. right? So it's a fully dy dynamic dialogue system. And you can add your own dialogues to it as well. It's very, very, very simple to do as well. So it's it's kind of think of it as a unified place for all your configurations, and um, it's all config driven, right? So you don't have to do any coding unless you want to. And of course, the code will work. Just so, stuff like your event handlers from config files, like you know, onload. Uh, button clicks, everything everything works just like normal dialogue, except you don't have to worry about spawning the dialogues. It, it all it all kind of merges into this one single unified um, bigger display, if you, if you will, right? So this one here is just controls, you know, just cause all, all the epoch controls, you know, you just press the key, for example, the backspace. Yeah, yeah well now you have, you can trade with the backspace. <laughs> I'll reset everything and um, for now we got, I'm gonna keep the change log there as well um, we'll see maybe we'll keep this one maybe not see how it works out the change log is uh, essentially this is like an HTML page literally which is local right so, and um, I'll leave the code in of course if, if you want to do your own HTML page that that's loaded in here that's that's perfectly fine uh, the HTML is very limited, though, so, uh, you know. Uh. But with, uh, with the HTML pages, you can do some cool stuff like welcome messages, you know, uh, several rules. Of course, you can do structured text if you want, <laughs> if, you, if you're into heavy editing, you know, with, with all the colors and, and stuff. But yeah. Um, so this whole unified menu can be used for, um, you know, like, again, welcome messages, several rules. Uh, maybe you, if you want to design some kind of a small tool, that messages an admin, for example, you know? like a private message to admin. That's cool. that's possible. Uh, something like a voting system, maybe uh, some server settings, like range uh, range adjustments, so you don't have to right click binoculars anymore. <laughs> you know, some some something more professional looking. Um, what else? A small small admin menu. Mm -hmm. I, I I can see that possible. Yeah. Not at the moment. I will be doing a condition based uh, spawning of the menu. Which will need some testing, of course. But for now, uh, everyone will see exactly the same. The clients, admins, doesn't matter. And uh, what I was also thinking, it would be something cool to have for AI missions, for example. Like uh, information for clients for both the AI mission, the current AI missions ongoing, and uh, maybe even controls for admins. Yeah, so spawn new AI missions and shit like that, or delete the AI missions. I always wanted that feature back in the uh, day epoch days. <laughs> right, so <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to actually develop uh, your own dialogues for this and, and actually put them in here. And uh, when I say dialogues, they're not really dialogues. If I got you confused, uh, let me show you what I mean. They're actually resource groups. And actually, the whole, the whole thing has nothing to do with dialogues, it's actually to do with display. A display that already exists in the game, which is the 49 one, which is the escape menu. Alright, so <clears throat> for this to work, of course, you, are, yeah, you want to launch your single player mission. Right, you can't do this in the, in the, <coughs> in the multiplayer. I'm just gonna remove the weapons here. And when you press escape, you have the GUI editor, so we jump into that one. Alright, onto the files. Okay, my files are here. Don't worry, this is my own work workspace. But um, for you, you will uh, for you maybe you'll find everything under the config. I'm not. I still have to re re, re um, arrange the files for the structure. But currently, like okay, okay, in future all the files will be in under e config, right? If you're an admin, server admin, all your files will be you you'll be using description.ext instead for every single thing I'm showing here you'll be using description.ext it's as simple as that and uh, the script is smart enough to detect whether or not the, the description.ext exists right 
Alright, so... So for the, from the configs, we're gonna go in the uh, configs. And... Uh, <laughs> oh, there you go. So epoch, epoch configurator. It's a very small menu. And uh, so basically, you'll be de defining your elements here. So the script, what script does, it goes through this config here and it creates these new elements from here. The elements here is uh, going to be uh, the name in the drop down list. If you want, you can also use the color, an icon, like a tool, you know, just a part of PAA file, and the control group. The control group you're going to be using. So I'll show you that one now. Alright, so for now I am using deeper code one. Of course, you will be using description.ext or if you're a developer, then the config part, con config folder in the future. And um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I've separated the files in. You know. So here's the an example of the the HTML I did. Okay. So that one spawns the change log. Right. So and uh, so this one here is used for the, for the controls there. I'm also leaving full sources as well, just in case. Alright, for the template, here's what you do. You copy this part here, okay, where it says template. Just copy from uh, from from the square brackets with the dollar sign there, okay. Once you copy that, you press, if you have a GUI editor open already, just press Ctrl O. Right, or it will if you're loading the GUI editor with this in the clipboard, it will automatically load it for you. Alright, so this is the main, like the main template, if you want, <laughs> if you will, and um, this is as the uh, like. How do I put this? You can you can still resize everything here, right? Of course, but um, the height will be always the same. So that's the only thing. So we, we, what you can still do is you can adjust the width if you want. It can be bigger or it can be smaller. And uh, the menu, I forgot to show you actually. Um, let me just close this. If you press escape, you, you see I have the debug, debug console, right? And, and the menu was on the right hand side here. Actually, uh, for the normal players, without the debug console, the menu will be shifted to the left. So you have even more width space, okay? Keep that in mind if you're designing something. And I had debug console in the, in, in the multiplayer because obviously I have it edited, uh, enabled them. <coughs> Alright, so with the template, the template is actually a group, okay? Or if you're making your own group, which is also fine. Uh, make sure you're selecting the safe zone, okay? So the position type. And, um, okay, that's it. Maybe we're gonna lock this one down. So control L. We lock it down so it doesn't interfere with us. Right, we can still press space to see where it is. And let's create something. Um, let's go with the generic generated picture for now. Right. Something like this. It's fine. And uh, see, nothing happens here if, when I just move it around because it does not it belong to the gr uh, group yet. So, in the position type, you select control group. And now it belongs to the group. And uh, its positions are all fully dynamic, to, uh, related to the group, not to the, not to the screen anymore. So, if I, yeah. So, what that means if the menu is moved, the elements inside. Excuse me, if the group is moved, the elements inside this group will be moved as well. So, it's pretty cool. It's much better than um, normal dialogues. Alright, so we have the picture. Uh, we'll add some text. I see text. The text was added to the group all automatically because the first element we added to the group also. So, the text also gets added there. And let's add uh, just a simple button. All right. I'm not gonna go into fancy into this, right? And um, y you can leave it at, like this, like you're pretty much done, right? But um, 
if you want, you can all, of course add some background to it. Um, normally, the uh, the menu does not have its own background. So what you saw previously in the preview, actually, that's me adding. That was me adding the backgrounds. So let's add a pretty background there. Oops. Eh, something like that is fine. We have a background. You don't have to re resize the the control menu, but you know you can if you want to. So press Control L. Uh, make sure to move the background down. Okay, uh, order priority is very important. Uh, otherwise, the background will be spawned in front of the text, and text will become more dullish, darkish, or washed out. So you don't want that. So you always want your priority stuff to be on top. All right. Let's open the resource group. Unlock the resource group. Sorry. I'm just going to resize it. As long as it fits, it's fine. Yeah, it's, all, it's all safe. So press Ctrl S. And um, so the first one here, uh, you always want to save out the, uh, the GUI editor format okay, for yourself, right? Because then you can just load it in later on if you want to do some adjustments. I'm not going to do that now, but you definitely want to do it. <coughs> it's going to look like this. Okay, it's much uh, much better than uh, saving out as a dialogue than spawning in the dialogue because we're not working with dialogues. We're working with the controls there, right? So if if you do it the normal way, you would have to convert the resource group into the dialogue, which is ah, bleh. right. So now we saved it out. Let's make a new file. Save it out there. Change the language. And I'm actually pretty much done here. This is actually the actual format you're using, right? So you don't have to do any crazy adjustments. If if you look here, see it says IDC. If I change it to IDD, now that's a dialogue. That's literally a normal, normalized dialogue you would use, you know. <laughs> but no, that's not what you're gonna do. Okay, let's copy this, and I'm just gonna add it somewhere here on the on the bottom. And uh, I want you to understand one thing. This resource co control group, okay, it is actually spawned inside another resource control group. So this whole menu is also kind of like a, well, not really, but kind of like um, a part of the group. So you don't really need the X, Y, Z. Yeah. Okay, they can be zeros. Ah, that's select my shit, I'm sorry guys. And you don't need the IDC. Oh, if you want, you can put minus one in there. Okay, let's call it something. Um, okay, something. And um, we have few groups you can choose from. Um, one with um, scroll bars, one without no scroll bars. I'm gonna go with no scroll bars, just in case. Well, it shouldn't spawn any scroll bars anyway, but yeah, just in case. And that's it. Now that we, yeah, we just created the dialogue. If you want, you can of course add um, your event handlers. Just like normal ones, okay? On click, on load, on unload. That will work fine. You can add your own you know, event handlers here. It'll work just fine, just like normal dialogue. <laughs> no exceptions. Right. So, you know, what you want to do is you want to copy the name and close this. I'm just gonna copy the remap here. Right. <coughs> so now we're adding a new element. And. Uh, Recorded text. Let's add uh, color. I'm just gonna keep that one here. And now we just copy the name into the control group we're gonna spawn in, that, and we're ready. 
that is it. So I'm just gonna repack it. Imagine the possibilities, right? <laughs> I mean, imagine having like a, a small control, um, control elements to AI missions, right? How fucking cool would that be? Some kind of quest system, maybe, you know, um, like a quest log, <laughs> mission log, well, you know. yeah, oh, I, I, I could see that working. I could definitely see that working. <laughs> Remember, I left a group uh, a little bit bigger than the background so that we're actually gonna see that defect here now so there you go so we have pink recorded text and boom it's all in how simple that is right very 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 simple it's all in, and, and as, as you can see the bit is the dynamically adjusted depending on how big the group you, how big the group you made in the editor so keep that in mind and you can see here the background Actually, this does not align with the uh, rest of the menu, with the, with the rest of the background. So, you just have to take your time adjusting it. Oh, not really. Um, back in the editor menu, I'm just gonna spawn it from here. Fuck. Uh, the zero, zero would be here, right? Just, uh, so there we go. So the zero zero is on top here, and one one would be the one. Well, actually, one one wouldn't matter. But uh, what matters is the the first two first parts, the x and y zero zero, which is on top left in 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 the, uh, in the editor when you when you want to do the perfection. And that zero zero x for x and y will literally be the top left corner in here. So just wanted to let you know that. And the width uh, is completely dynamic, of course. Um, okay, well, that's it. That concludes the tutorial. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the new edition.